Non Boolean Logic with Pamela's new workout. In this video, we'll be doing a deeper dive into logic with PAMs, more specifically, non Boolean logic. These are the two waves we'll be working with in the oscilloscope you can see here coming from channels one and two. I have a duplicate of two down on six and I set the logic to AND1. So it's the same as if I did AND1 from 2. Um, I just did this so you could still see the base sine waves in the lights there. Up first, the AND function. The AND function acts as a VCA between the two signals. A VCA is nothing more than an AND function. Both signals need to be high in order for a signal to come through. So this is the AND function. Now I have both sine waves outputs here going to an actual analog VCA so we could hear what that sounds like and see what it looks like in comparison with the digital VCA output. So you can see it follows the same basic path, except one is much more digitized than the other one, and you get these big jumps in between. one for comparison what it sounds like. Here we just have the base signal going um, and here I'm going to eliminate channel 2 and instead use channel 3 where I'm just going to do a level offset here. Um, just adjust the level amount to see how it works um, with the and it's going to work like just like a VCA opening it up. but it is including some digitization here. You can see it's stepping it quite a bit in, in really interesting ways. At about 60%, it kind of square waves it. And then back down at 50, it's like shifting it interestingly. Up next, the OR function. The OR works by outputting the highest value between the two channels. Don't think of it as a sum, but more as a binary switch between the two outputs of whichever one is high at that time. Uh, let's see in here what that sounds like. See, it's quite stepped in areas. Let's compare it to the analog signal. Here I'll have the analog output coming from the OR function on maths. So you can see it's quite a bit more stepped. But it's still pretty close. Just the level here. So this one should output just the highest one. So it should be just putting a line in the lower parts, like water fill rising up. But it is doing some interesting things here, keeping that curve and raising the curve instead of flattening it out there. So 
Interesting. It almost feels like it's inverting it, but it's not. If you want some interesting vibrato, do that and then offset it back down. Up last, the dreaded XOR function. This, the signal, sets the amount of inversion of the other signal. A 100% fully high signal will completely invert the other signal. It's much more chaotic. Here I have these two outputs going into um, Anna by Mystic Circuits um, out the XOR output for some analog XOR function. So we can see right there it missed the whole bump in the analog one that the digital one was picking up, so it must be calculating things differently in the middle there when uh, both, both levels are not neither high nor low. Let's listen to the other signal. Oh, and this signal is actually going negative, whereas the pan signals are always positive. So this one is going to slowly invert the signal in smaller, from small chunks to bigger and bigger chunks. You can see that center part there is already inverted. And uninverted. Now it's inverted again, but with more chunks. Okay. Now it's, again, not inverted. You can see here that it's moving like the gist of the wave as we go, but then keeping certain function parts of it not flipped. Until we get to full, where it's completely flipped wave. That's all for this video. Um, there'll be more coming soon. Until next time.